right, it's Gary Callis, Explode Magazine, and the host of Around Town with Gary Callis. You know how we like to do it? Always something new, something fresh. Today, you are not going to believe who I'm with. This guy, when I first met him, I was like, wow, I can't believe this guy's real young. But his ambitions are old. This guy's trying to do something that a lot of folks are trying to do, but can't really do it. This guy's name is Carl Lozier. This young man is actually running for the state senate. I mean, he's actually trying to run for the state senate. I think he's going to do it. He's a libertarian. He has different views, different ideas. I can stand here all day long and try to blow this guy's horn. But I'm not going to blow his horn. I'm going to let this toot his horn himself. Carl, man, look, I, I've met you. I think you're an awesome guy. But look, what I don't want to do, I'm not going to stand here and talk about you. Please, by all means, tell the Explode family in the network who you are, where you're from, and that's, that's who we are. What's going on, man? All right, well, thank you, Gary. I appreciate you having me. Uh, my name is Carl Lozer. I'm running for Senate in Virginia, obviously, in, uh, t in the 10th district. I am from originally Long Island, New York, and I moved here when I was 15. And now I have been living in Powhatan for about 10 to 11 years. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with Virginia. I've been in the Chesterfield area, the Richmond area, and the Powhatan area quite a while, and that's my district. So I'm Pretty familiar with it. Okay, Patrick, how old are you, man? I am 24 years old. 24 years old, great. Like I said, that's a that's a lofty goal. Virginia Senate, 24 years old. Um, not, but again, bro, I commend you, man. That's absolutely awesome. We've had a chance to talk a little bit, but again, like I said, these folks really don't know you, man. So, um, everybody's worried about their money. Everybody's worried about their jobs. We've had a chance to talk economic development. Oh, we're playing you have this, man. That's, that's actually a great question. I am working, my, one of my passions is working on creating economic opportunity. Um, I think that there's some, Virginia right now is kind of lacking economic opportunity. Businesses are not prospering where they should be. So I think right now we gotta look at how Virginia is to the business world, to a business owner like yourself, or to other business owners, people who are also trying to get into the market. I think that right now we don't see people entering the market like they used to be. Um, I would like to say that we, by having all these regulations and um, other laws that government is enacting, we are limiting our power as the community, as people, to grow ourselves as a society. Okay. That's interesting. You know, um, one of the words that you use is one of my key words, opportunities. Yes. Well, a lot of folks are looking for like a job or whatever, whatever. An opportunity is something you can make for yourself or have other people around you that have resources. And if they did something a little bit different, it could create opportunity for you. But it's gonna come on something else too. Because again, that opportunity for is also, but how do you feel about the educational system in Virginia? How do you feel about that? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that as well. I think that the education system needs work. We are lacking education. Even throughout the United States, we are not where we used to be. We used to be the top country in the U.S. I mean, top country in the world, excuse me. The U.S. used to be top country. Now, we, you know, especially in Virginia, Richmond school systems, we all, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people have known, you know, heard about the horrors that have been going on in the Richmond school systems. But we need to start bringing our communities together and, and say, what is the problem? And once we find that problem, there's a lot of problems going on. And the education system, what I personally would love to do in, in the Senate is create more opportunities, of, you know, for the younger age groups to be able to start going into their careers and instead of learning not, not the unnecessary stuff, but basically we got to start focusing more on career oriented stuff as well as ways for them to be an individual and be able to bring their own bring their own um, ideas to the table because that's what makes our society um, improve and prosper. So reading, writing, arithmetic, that's not enough. So now what you're saying is our kids need to get to a point that they can start to understand business at a, at a younger age. Yes. Because um, I know one thing, if you don't, you're going to Richmond, you see um, some of the other people that may not, they might be from other countries, and they may own convenience stores, grocery stores, and you, when you walk in, you see their kids behind the counter. Yes, yes. Right? So because we've not seized that opportunity, our kids 
really don't get that. So I guess I, I feel I feel you on yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, actually, I wanted to bring this to to your attention as well. I would like to see the younger generation start to work a little bit earlier, so that way they can get experience while they don't have as much overhead while they're younger. Because, for instance, when you're 13 years old, I know in my religion, I'm Jewish. You know, we're considered a man at 13. You're supposed to be able to start being able to take care of your family and you know do things for yourself. So why can I not be able to work at the age of 13 if I choose to with consent of my parent? Right now, you can't do that. You can't do that in Virginia. And and you don't have as much overhead when you're young because you're living under your parents. So now when you're 13, you can start saving your money, being responsible, teaching your child how to be responsible and say, this is how you want to use your money effectively. And with that, you can then start your business maybe at an early age at 21 or 22. Because your ideas are, you know, you're still creative when you're younger. When you get older, you know, your creativity starts to lack. I'm, you know, that's funny way down, but I know mine has gone down from when my imagination used to be when I was 13. So I, I just, I think that your ideas when you're younger are something you should be able to bring to the table. You know, that's interesting you said, because I know um, in farm, in families with farms and things like that, their kids, I mean, by the time these kids are 11, 12 years old, if you can't drive a track, you got a problem. Yes, yeah, so yeah. These kids are already handling firearms, they're already going out hunting or whatever, whatever. they're trying to be, a, I guess, a part of the community, but more importantly, a major part of the family. So I, 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 yes. I, 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 I can see that. Um, Carl, is there anything that you would just like to tell the Explode family, the folks that's in, in the network? I mean, anything about you you'd like them to know about? I will go back to my, my platform, and I want to say that, you know, my platform is bringing individualism and limiting government. Now, and the reason I say this is because, you know, people get, you know, a little bit kind of scared, but I think this is a good thing, and I think I want to create with my passions, I have three passions that I'm really trying to bring to Virginia, and it's creating economic opportunity, ending prohibition, and enforcing equal treatment under the law. Those three passions and, and my principles, if I bring that to Virginia, we're gonna see a better place to live in Virginia. And, and when I say equal protection of, of the law, I think that we need to start focusing on laws saying some are benefiting some and some and you know aren't benefiting others. Why not? Let every law apply to everybody equally. Right. And I think there is a problem that right now Virginia is facing in a lot of their laws. Not just Virginia, but most of the country. So I am going to work hard when I get into you know, the legislator to create economic opportunity and prohibition and enforce equal treatment under the law. You know, um, I guess after all this stuff with Ferguson, all the stuff that's going on in New York and whatever, 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 equal treatment under the law is something that everybody's, uh, that's a hot button oh, right now. Oh, of course. And I, and I don't think people really see that terminology as how I've said it, but it definitely is there. Like you said, you know, that's a hot button. I don't think anybody's put an actual, you know, quote or wording to it, but that, for me, is what, what it really is. It's equal treatment under the law. Okay. Well, look. I am so glad that Carl and I have had a chance to come out here and um, sit together and talk for a few minutes. But more importantly, I've had a, I'm so happy that Carl's had a chance to introduce himself to you all and for you all to get a chance to meet Carl. This is Gary Callis, Explode Magazine, and again, the host of the Round Town with Gary Callis. I hope that you've enjoyed this interview with my friend Carl Lozier. And when it comes time for November, for your time to vote, the Libertarian Party is a new party, something that... Um, I guess a lot of folks don't really know anything about it, but I tell you what, www.lozierforliberty.com is where you want to go for this information, or text 72727 to Lozier for Liberty, and it's going to send you Carl's website back, you get a chance to see his views, you get to see what he's standing for, a great guy, a sharp young guy, and somebody I think that we need to get behind. Again, this is Gary Callis, thanking you again for coming out with me and Carl. Thank you, Gary.